Following on from the last video, it's clear we have to build a class. The diagram in front of you is that of a class that has the name coin flipper. It has a class level variable called heads or tails CL and it has a method called flip. When we declare this as programmers, when we produce this particular class, we will know that when we create an instance of it, i.e. an object, we do so with a constructor new as you can see here and that will produce an instance of this particular class. And we can see that at its center, it has a variable called heads or tails CL. And we have this method here, flip, which is responsible for generating the string tails or the string heads. Of course, as it stands, this particular model isn't appropriate because we can see in the middle that we have the variable heads or tails, but we cannot gain access to it if we decide to declare it with the access modifier private, which we should if we're going to be object oriented programmers. What we actually need is the other mechanism that allows us access to this. And of course, we showed that in the previous video. We showed it with respect to including a read only property procedure. So I think it's important that we have. Have another look at the class and see if we can include this particular read-only property procedure. Here is the class again. We can still see that it's got the name coin flipper and we can still see that it has the same behavior, the same method flip. But in the center now, in addition to this particular variable heads or tails CL, we can see we need the addition of the property procedure called heads or tails. Now, when we decide to produce an instance of this, we will produce an object and we will know that we need to do that with an appropriate constructor. And when we construct the object, it will look like this in the execution space. Here we can see we have the method flip. In the center we can see we have the class level variable heads or tails CL and this represents the property procedure heads or tails. And we should now realize that the property procedure and the heads or tails CL variable go together. So this is a more accurate picture of the class that I wish to develop for modeling the flipping of a coin. At this point, I think it's important that we model the program using a collaboration diagram. And we need to do this in advance of writing the actual code, because it allows us to think about how the object will communicate before we attempt to write the code. Now, I think we'll do this as a Windows Forms application. So the first thing I'm quite clear on is I need an instance of Form 1, which you can see I've produced here using the components of a collaboration diagram. The next thing, it's obvious we need to create an instance of the coin flipper class and we can see that we can show that here and we can see that the class is coin flipper and I've decided to give it the name coin and we can see the presence of the colon and the underline which shows us that this is an instance of the coin flipper class now I need to make a decision as to what the relationship will be between the unnamed instance of form one and the coin object and I'm going to make that association as you can see here by this particular stereotype and that will have an implication as to how the code will look when I actually write it the next thing I need to ask myself is what are the messages that are going to take place well I'm going to have an event on form one most probably a button event such that when I click the button a message will be sent from the unnamed instance of form 1 to the coin instance of the coin flipper class and I'll show that here by this particular message and you can see I've numbered it as 1 and that is saying flip and it shows the direction of the message so we can see that the message leaves the unnamed instance of form 1 and travels towards the named instance of the coin flipper class and of course what that will do, it'll create heads or tails at the center of that object. Now the next thing I need to do is to say to myself, well, once the coin object has stored heads or tails in its center, form one will want to know what that is. So we need to send another message. And that message is here. And you can see that I've numbered it message two. And the message that I'm sending is this here, look, heads or tails. Now that will access the property procedure. And of course the property procedure will then allow access to what's stored at the center of the object and in fact remember it is a read-only property procedure what will be return will be of type string and you can see that I've shown that here this is telling me that what will be returned 
whatever it is, it will be a string. And I know that it's going to be heads or tails. When it gets returned, it's going to have to be stored somewhere. So this here, where it says ret, which is short for return, return heads or tails, is going to be a variable that's declared inside form 1. And this here means a sign. So it's really saying that what we have on this side is going to get hold of the string that's stored in the center of the coin object and return it to this particular variable here. Now that is a collaboration diagram that gives me a clear understanding of as a programmer as what I need to actually implement when I write the code. And it's been achieved by this collaboration diagram. And I suppose the thing that's a little bit more difficult to understand here is this message. Um, because it looks a little bit involved, but it's quite clear really. It really means that this tells me that something's going to be returned. And when it's returned, it's going to be given to this variable. What will be returned will be something of type string. And this is the name of the property procedure of the coin object that stores either tails or heads depending upon what this method flip generated when message one was sent between the two objects. And finally, I think we need to realize that these messages are numbered. Number one, number two. It tells us which one goes first, which one goes second.